Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Shane. So if you've got a podcast and you're wondering whether or not you should be using an expander or a gate, I'm going to talk about both and why you should be choosing the expander on the most part. So let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Shane. So the audio that you're listening to right now is this Rode Procaster going into my Behringer Ultra Gain Pro and then going through the MDX 2600 expander from Behringer as well, which also has noise gate capability as well as expander capability as well as lots of other stuff. So the expander versus noise gate, which one you should be using and why? That was a question that I couldn't really find the proper answer to until I really started fiddling around with all of the settings on this unit. And I realized, man, the expander is exactly what you need if you've got two people in the room and I'm going to explain why. So the first thing I should mention is I've been using noise gates for a while when I do my podcast because I figured that was the easiest way to get the sound sort of out of the other microphone, but it isn't. Expanders work so much better and they require a whole lot less post-processing as well. And I'm going to explain the difference. So if you're in a room with two microphones right now, this microphone is currently enabled and it's set at the same threshold and volume and all that kind of stuff as this particular microphone. So while I talk, I'm going to switch over to this microphone. And you can probably just hear my voice coming through it, but it's at a very reduced volume. And that's fantastic. You know what that means? It means if I was using a gate, that microphone would be completely shut off, which also has its drawbacks. And I'm going to explain a little bit about that too. So the problem I faced with the noise gate in a room like this that isn't you know, properly treated or whatever, it doesn't really matter. But if the room has some reflections in it as well, sound can bounce off the wall, come back into the microphone and trigger the gate. So you're essentially hearing almost like an echo coming through the second microphone. If I was to laugh really loudly and I was using a gate, it could actually open the gate. Or if you've got someone who's very softly spoken and they don't meet the volume recognition of the gate, it means the gate might not open and you might miss some of their words. The benefit of the expander, it will reduce anything under a th certain threshold, but not completely mute it, which is awesome. It means you can actually sit back a little bit further from the microphone like this and still talk and it's going to work. But that microphone won't actually be picking up anywhere near the same amount of signal as this microphone, obviously. And it means in post-production, you don't need to do as much fiddling to get the volumes of the microphones sorted out. I'm going to switch microphones and show you that again. Now, there's nothing wrong with running a noise gate. If you do have a lot of ambient noise outside, it's probably still the best option on the most part. But you can reduce the actual threshold of the expander down to about negative 20, where I've got mine set on the Behringer right now. And it should be sounding fine. And this microphone shouldn't be picking up much either. So what I'm going to do now is swap over to this microphone. I'll move this so you can see it in shot. So as of right now, you're going to be just hearing the audio that's getting picked in that microphone instead of this microphone. And now back to the Rode pod mic. The reason this works really well is you're actually bringing down anything under negative 20 dB, which means most people, if they approach the microphone or even if they sort of go, huh, or they talk softly, it's still gonna be above that threshold because they're sitting right in front of the microphone. Everything else comes down and it's not clearly getting cut off like it would be if it's a noise gate where it completely mutes the signal. I'll show you that now. All right, over to the actual noise gate. Now, what you're listening to is nothing when I talk. It actually gets rid of that altogether. But what I found in a room like where I'm actually recording my podcast, that the noise gate wasn't the best because certain volumes would trigger it. Or if I had someone over who spoke softly, like I mentioned before, it wouldn't be enough to activate the microphone. So the expander was a far better option. And now back to the expander mode. If I was to stop talking... It's going to drop it down, but it's not going to sound like the gate has to reopen every time I talk, giving you a very sort of staggered sound. Now, you can also adjust that with the attack ratio, but I found the expander just feels a lot more natural, and it also picks up your voice, even if I was to turn around. I wondered how Ethan on H3 Podcast could always just turn around and keep talking, and the mic would just pick everything up. <laughs> and that's because he's using an expander. I'm almost certain of it. I'm sure it's probably heavily compressed in post as well to get that big sound, but it means you can kind of turn around now and talk and not be too worried that it's gonna lose all of your voice. 
But at the same time, the other microphone isn't going to be picking up all of it at a loud volume. It's going to only pick up stuff that meets its certain threshold when you get it up to a certain volume. And same for this one. This one's probably not going to be picking up as much or if anything now as well. Thanks again for watching, folks. This is Shane. I hope this video has been helpful. This is something that I wondered about for a while. I'm trying to find all this information on noise gates, which I knew about because I've been producing music for years, versus expanders, which was something that you know I'd heard of, but I've never actually used in music production at all. So I was like, what is this doing? And what triggered it for me, I got in Final Cut, and I dragged an expander onto one of my audio tracks, and I went, now I get it. This is the perfect solution for doing a podcast. If you want to get one of these things as well that I use, the Behringer MDX 2600, I'll leave some links in the description below and you can check them out. I just think it makes a huge difference to the audio. Just to let you know, I also use a DBX 286S just for single channel stuff as well. And that's a really great unit. It does a very similar thing. But I think the way the expander works on the Behringer it's actually my favorite. I know that's kind of crazy, but it's absolutely true. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I went out and bought all this stuff. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Hopefully this has been helpful. There's a lot of videos out there on YouTube about expanders and they don't really quite nail the, the functionality side of it, especially in a podcast setting. So I hope this has been helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. My name's Shane. I'll catch you soon. See ya.